Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, today's video I'm going to tell you a story. Unfortunately, it's uh, kind of a sad story, but hopefully in the end we'll, we'll bring it all around and uh, end up with something, something nice out of the deal. So, I'm sitting here on a pile of ash logs, and I'm excited to saw them. I haven't sawed ash in, in a little while, and some of you may already know where I'm going with this. If you're not really tuned into, uh, you know, ecological news, and uh, you know, if you're not into the sawmill world, and not a woodworker, um, you may kind of not know about the emerald ash borer, but... Um, I think at this point a lot of people have heard of it, maybe if you don't know what it is, you've heard of it in passing, but um, the emerald ash borer is a little beetle, and it's green in color, hence the name emerald, and like a lot of our foreign pests, was imported from Asia, uh, actually a little over 20 years ago now, and it has just absolutely devastated the ash population in the US. It. Uh, is very widespread at this point. Um, there's very few nice stands of ash left. It uh, it really is an ecological shame. I know on our own property here, we had a lot of ash that are all, all dead. Um, there's nothing left. We tried to preventively harvest as much as we could. And, um, you know, we did salvage a lot of it, but there was just some we could not get to. And, the damage is pretty well done. Um, they had tried quarantines and uh, the quarantine of moving firewood from county to county. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with a bug um, that I've read, you know, can, can fly several miles, um, quarantines just aren't going to work. Plus, you're never going to get 100% compliance. It's just, it's, you know, you have to try something, but it was a futile effort from the start. So, uh, Basically what the emerald ash borer does, it bores into the tree, it gets between the bark and the cambium layer, and it basically strangles the tree. It basically kills it that the tree cannot move nutrient up and down, the tree dies. Uh, you can see evidence here, they always leave these D-shaped holes when they emerge. So these trees uh, were killed by emerald ash borer, and this is the first ash I've sawed in a while because it's gone through this area a few years ago. And basically, uh, if we didn't saw it two, three years ago, anything that's left is just not worth sawing. It makes firewood, but for grade lumber, it's just not worth it because ash is a lighter wood. If you've ever seen it, which hopefully we'll see some nice stuff here in a little while, it's a very light blonde wood, and if it stands dead through the summer heat around here, it just stains, it gets a gray stain to it. Uh, it's just not very appealing anymore. Unlike oak trees that can kind of stand dead a few years, and you can still pull some nice lumber out of them, you know, you might lose a little bit out of the outside, but the, the heart of the, the log stays nice. We just haven't found that the ash does that. Uh, it just doesn't hold up well standing dead. So it really created a uh, short-term problem here where we had so much ash I mean I saw thousands of feet of ash and then there was none and for any of you that have worked with ash you might agree with me it's kind of an underappreciated wood for years and years and years here before emerald ash borer was in the area ash was you know played second fiddle to oak. It has a coarser grain like oak, and I just never had anybody coming to look for it. And it was very few and far between at least. And then once we started getting all this ash come in from my own property and, and people just, you know, taking down trees on their property and, and selling the logs, I thought, well, I gotta do something with this. So we started making it into hardwood flooring. And it is some of the most beautiful hardwood flooring you'll ever see. Uh, the sapwood is a nice blonde color. The heartwood is a medium brown. And actually the lower grade stuff has such character in it, it just makes an absolutely beautiful floor. Um, so that, once I started seeing that, then honestly that really bummed me out that we were losing such a treasure here. Um, 
but we were able to sell you know thousands of feet of hardwood flooring so i'm, I'm happy that you know that is going to exist and hopefully last a generation if not longer in people's homes um because the supply of ash is just kind of dried up around here um the stuff i've been seeing wasn't worth buying and there are some around i've been to some other mills where they've had some nice ash logs that they've found you know one place or another but it's getting harder and harder to come by so what happened here i had bought some pine logs from a guy bought a load of pine logs you know he was trying to sell uh just a mixed batch of logs he had and he had some really nice giant pine logs and that's what i went there for and then he had these ash logs kind of to the side and i said what are you doing with those and they caught my attention because they were so clean looking on the ends of the log they still had nice bright white color i didn't see any gray stain in them and he said well i don't know i said well let's make a load out of it i'll buy the pine and uh, and the ash and I'll, I'll come pick them up from you so that's what we did and i got this uh these couple logs and now i they've been sitting here a few weeks i've been wanting to get to them because like i said you don't want to let this stuff lay around too long and i just haven't had time but i did end seal the ends and i'm going to put them on the mill today and hopefully hopefully we get some nice ash lumber out of it we get to show you guys what it looks like i sure hope this isn't the ash the last ash i ever saw it probably won't be but it's really getting few and far between i have virtually no ash in stock anymore um it's i have just a little bit i've even thought about maybe holding on to this for myself but you know, if you do that with everything in the lumber business pretty soon you're not in the lumber business you're you have a hobby so i don't know what i'm going to do with this to be honest with you i don't even know how i'm going to saw it yet i'm going to kind of open it up see what it looks like and then make a decision as i'm sawing so maybe i'll do some thicker stuff some one inch mix as far as the logs go well they're a whole mixed batch there's some nice stuff and then well not so nice but i was happy to have it just because it is kind of getting hard to come by it really is sad um not gonna make any statements about world trade or anything like that but it seems all of these pests you know spotted lanternfly emerald ash borer they all are imported and well we get hold, get stuck holding the bag here with this stuff that really really messes with our ecosystem here in the u.s so uh that's above my pay grade but it is sad that when you drive around at least in our area here and you see these woods full of ash that are just standing dead that are just crumbling um, they kind of die from the top down you can spot them from a mile away so it's a lost resource and i'm going to try to take these logs here and make the best of it so let's get set up and uh, let's do some sawing
right, let me show you what we got. Some pretty nice stuff. Now this stuff sawed out pretty clean. I did have a few pieces on the edges of the logs that had a little bit of gray stain to them. But overall this is pretty nice, uh, nice log run ash. This is your sapwood. And you can see this pinkish color. Um, it kind of disappears a little bit as the, the wood dries. Um, it, like every other wood, certain logs have different hues to them. You don't always see this. Sometimes it's more of a just plain white color. And you can see the heartwood mixed in here. This brown heartwood makes a really nice contrast. Um, there's actually some stuff a few rows down that's perfectly dead clean, no knots. So I got some good grade lumber. That's actually how I sawed all the one inch stuff. I grade sawed it, trying to get the best yield I could, the best grade. And here you can see, I didn't sweep these off, but some boards to the edge yet. That's some nice stuff. And I also cut some two inch live edge material out of the biggest log and that's some really sharp stuff now there you can really see that contrast between the the really nice heartwood and like the cream blonde sapwood makes beautiful beautiful live edge slabs i've done a bunch of that in the past so i figured i'd leave some thick and that can either be uh just sold as live edge or I can rip it into strips and make butcher block. I've also done a, a bunch of ash butcher block tops in the past. Really nice, really sharp stuff. So it is a really nice, beautiful wood. It is definitely unique. Um, kind of unlike anything else we have around here. You've got that light color of maple with the coarse grain of oak, you know, if you're trying to compare it to something. And uh, it's just, it is really a shame that uh, that's going to the wayside, gonna be a thing of the past. So, um, kind of makes me sad on one hand. On the other hand, it's, it's always nice to see beautiful wood like this. I never get tired of seeing it. Um, so I guess uh, I'd encourage you, if you have some ash on your property, uh, go out and evaluate them. You know, hopefully you can still catch them in time. Hopefully they're not too far gone. Uh, try to get an idea of how the emerald ash borer is in your area. Uh, I know here in the Northeast, it's pretty well widespread. There's pockets where there's still some nice looking ash, but by and large, it's standing dead by now. So if you can, if you have the ability um, to saw it yourself or take it to a mill, try to get something useful out of it. I know I've had a few local people here that uh, saw this coming a few years ago, got on top of it, uh, you know, stockpiled some ash for their own, you know, for their own use, for, for their grandkids, whatever the case may be. So um, that's something uh, that's kind of probably going the way of American chestnut, honestly. You know, once was very plentiful, um, a very good utility wood, and now it's extremely scarce. Uh, all that's basically left of the American chestnut are old stockpiles and reclaimed stuff, things like that. So um, it's a shame, but uh, it's uh, just the, the way nature works, I suppose. So. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you next time.